Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna go over how I made this techno kick. Now, first, I'm just gonna play it and then I'm gonna take you through all of the processing. Let's go. Now, a techno kick is meant to be very thick, especially in the low frequencies, and usually it contains a large amount of reverb. Now, contrary to what a lot of mixing engineers say, which is you shouldn't really have reverb on your kick, with techno, it's kind of built around that heavy reverb, heavily compressed kick drum. And therefore, this trick is used in a lot of techno tracks. Um, Tom Hades, who's one of my favorite producers, he actually uses this trick a ton in his own productions. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply it for your own track, if this is the kind of style you're going for, as well. So let's get into kick two to begin with. Now the kick two, once you understand kick two and you know how to make a house kick, it's actually fairly simple. This is actually the same exact kick drum that I created for my house kick above. So all it is, fairly soft attack. So I've got a soft attack here and I'm not starting at a too high frequency and I'm decaying into the sub fundamental within a hundred and five or so milliseconds. Now the decay, whilst it is important, you should definitely have a large amount of energy around the low mid frequency. So about, you know, 150 and below. It's not that important. There are a lot of different variations you can get by just adjusting the decay curve in some way. Uh, but as long as you've got a fair amount of energy by sustaining the low mid frequencies, then that's gonna work just fine for a techno kick. Now I do have a click sample as well. This is quite soft generating just a little bit of high frequency content just to help pull the kick through. Now this is where the fun begins. So I've got an effects rack. Again, this is just for the dry kick. So this is the effects rack, which is generating the reverb. I'm gonna turn this off for now, just so you can hear what this is doing. So I've got my you know, favorite API EQ, softening the transient, boosting the high frequencies a little bit, and lowering the low mid range boxiness that you get, which I've mentioned from the previous videos. Then I have a transient master, again, softening the transient a little bit. And I have another transient designer by Isotope, which is softening the transient in the high frequencies. This is a multiband transient designer and keeping the low frequencies without any other transient effect, you know, whatsoever. So this is doing nothing. Whereas on the high frequencies, I am reducing the transient by turning down the attack a little bit. Okay. That's it for this effects rack, very basic. You can also add your own unique effects and saturations here to adjust the kick so that it's unique to you. Now this is where the fun part begins. Over here, I've got an effects rack with two chains. Now, the first chain, the reverb, that's simply using the Ableton's reverb plugin. I've got the input low cut and high cut off because I want the entire input of the kick to go into the reverb. Now what these do essentially is if I low cut, I can basically cut away part of the sound at the input stage. So I'm cutting away the low frequencies at the input stage. I don't want this. I want the entire kick drum, every single frequency to be inputted into the reverb plugin. What I do want is a large room, so large size. I want a large scale, 100% wet, diffusion where it is, and most importantly, a very long decay time. This is what makes the reverb very, very long. See, I'm gonna press play and lower the decay time, and then you can just hear how it takes away from that length, from that big, washy, reverb, techno kick feeling. This is what generates all of the space. Now, you have to heavily EQ the reverb output. So I've actually filtered the reverb output within the reverb plugin itself, and then I filtered it even more using an EQ straight after. So I'm gonna turn off the EQ, I'm gonna turn off the compressor, and I just want you to hear what the reverb is doing. 
You hear the transient being generated from the reverb. Now, even though I have low passed or rather high shelf the reverb output and I'm cutting away those high frequencies down to around 459 hertz and quite steeply as well we're still getting enough high frequencies from the reverb that make it very clearly audible. So what I did after the fact was add an EQ and low pass very heavily all of the high frequency content. The low pass is down to about 300 hertz and nothing above that is being let through. Now I've also high passed because when you're adding reverb in the low frequencies, one thing you wanna make sure you're doing, there isn't any reverb output going into the frequencies below what the speaker can, can generate. And generally club speakers generate frequencies down to about 37 Hertz. So if you don't high pass up to there, and there's a lot of reverb, low frequency energy going below 37 Hertz, a lot of problems can start to be caused and your track can just sound quite muddy and fall apart. So make sure you high pass your reverb output up to about at least 30 Hertz. In this case, I've gone to 62 just for good measure because I felt like that sounded about right to me. Now what I've also done is I have added a compressor to the reverb output again to just make it more dense. Take the low part of the reverb and bring it up, take the high part of the reverb and bring it down and just make the whole thing sound more dense with the compression. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. See how it almost feels like it's there even more and even louder when the compressor is on. Now, there are a couple more plugins that I've added just to let you know that that's not where you have to stop. You could add an echo to lengthen the reverb even more. Of course, an echo is gonna take the reverb input and delay it, add additional repetitions to it. And of course, a tremolator can allow you to dock the reverb whenever the original kick plays. So you get a reverb after the kick has finished. And this is what that would sound like. I've got tuck and plug in set to a quarter note, which is where the kick is currently playing on every quarter note, in other words, every beat. And I just want you to hear the result. Now, if you couldn't clearly hear that, what I'll do is solo the reverb output so that you're hearing just the reverb duck in and coming back in. Like so. And again, what that can do is make the combination of the reverb and kick sound a little bit cleaner, just because you're letting the kick come through dry essentially with no reverb, but then the reverb is kicking in as the kick is ending. Personally, I don't always love to do this. I feel like having the reverb throughout the entire kick can thicken those low frequencies, but it's completely up to you and also down to your mix. Now, on the dry kick, there is no other processing being applied other than the processing over here before it hits the reverb, other than an EQ at the very end. Now, as you can probably tell from this graph here, the only thing that EQ is doing is dipping the low mid frequencies, like I love to do, where I feel like there's a bit too much energy being generated from the reverb output. And that's all it's doing nothing else. Even without this, it's still going to sound fairly similar. And that's how you make a techno kick. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something from it. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions and I'll try to respond to each and every one. In the next video, I'm actually going to open up some of my project files and I'll show you the kicks that I've made for various different tracks and how I've applied them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.